everyone looks like we started our live stream how you doing i did not know we started until right now so we made it to yet another wednesday thank god for that right and it looks like we have four people on right now and this is part four of painting the portrait in india ink and airbrush and i'm having such a great time uh, with this and I'm actually starting to learn how to use this program believe it or not so that's always a plus so I'm gonna get this camera here my blog my vlogging camera and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna record this I'm gonna put this in my daily vlog of what it takes to start one of these live streams. Raul, how are you? It's so good to see you. How's everything today? So, you know, so uh, look for tomorrow morning's uh, video blog that I put up and you'll see some of the behind the scenes of what I do to actually make this happen. And so, so I'm so excited about part four and I hope you guys are as well. Brad, good to see you. How's it going? Patrick. How's everything? So glad you guys are here. So I got my gloves and we are ready to go. I'm going to take a swig of water. John, good to see you. How are you, my friend? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this camera and I'm just going to show you. These are the airbrushes that we'll be using. This is the Extreme Patriot Arrow and the Extreme Patriot 105. They're basically the same exact airbrush. The Arrow has a smaller cup, the 105 has a larger cup. As you see, they all look a little different than when you get them in the store because I modify them. And so the backing's different, the needle's different, the trigger is different. So all those differences go a long way. Hey, Stephen Leahy, how's it going, sir? Good to see ya. And so now what we can do is we're going to start with the media mixture for the Extreme Patriot 105 and then the light mixture for the Arrow. So this way we have those two designations there and the water for me to drink when I get thirsty. So let's go ahead and put that back and let's see if we can uh, get this show on the road. Okay, so go back here. Okay, so this is where we are, which is not too bad, you know. Uh, I didn't do anything off camera. I just basically wanted to do the whole thing with you guys. And you guys could watch it later and everything like that. So first thing I'm going to do is come here. And see, I have, though I definitely don't, you don't ever want to do this over your artwork. I know I'm paranoid, but lots of, lots of paintings have been destroyed in the past. So, so what I'm going to do, always shake it a little bit before you put in your inks. And just put a, a couple of drops, nothing too much. And we'll put the top back on. I'm a super neat artist, so if anything goes on the edge, I make sure that I go ahead and wipe it off. And let's see, Jerry, how's it going? Jerry, thank you so much. First time for Jerry. I really appreciate you hanging out with us, Jerry. I hope you have a good time. Any questions, you let me know. Tone, how's it going? So now we have the Extreme Patriot 105. Has a, it's a really great that it has this big cup. It comes in handy. And you really don't lose any detail. So, so we'll just put that in there. So we have the medium mixture and we have the light mixture. I always like to, when I'm in the mid, middle part of the painting, I like to have the two airbrush method, as you guys know, you know? So good to see you, Tone. Okay, so always put the top back on. There we go. Make sure your hands don't have any any ink and there we go we'll go back okay so there we are 
Now, the thing is, we're gonna go ahead with the light mixture and we'll start working. I always, 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 always like to test on a test sheet of paper before I touch my painting with any, any airbrush that I first started using. So, let's see. Give it a good spray. Make sure the airbrush is not only working well, but perfectly. Okay, that's so crucial. Okay, great, absolutely great. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good to see you. Thank you so much. So we have Mike, who's new as well. So to Jerry and Mike, thank you so much for hanging out. A 30-year hiatus? Hey, it's like yesterday. You're going to pick it back up right away. You're going to love the inks because it is so much easier. No mediums or anything like that. Just a lot of fun. So you'll really enjoy it. And so now... Now I have to decide what to do as far as the painting is concerned. Uh, so let's put this over here and you can see I'm recording this for, and did I record it? Let me see. See if I can go ahead and record. Oh, I am out of, uh, out of memory on that. So whatever I got, you'll see in the vlog. <laughs> It isn't a live stream if everything goes perfect, am I right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and sometimes we have to erase a little bit. Now remember what I always say, you want to you wanna use the most or the least aggressive of all erasers first and see if that works. No reason going in with the most aggressive eraser right away. Oh, Willie says he's enjoying the uh, daily videos. Hey, what's up, Roy? Good to see you. Very cool. So that's fantastic. And and Willie, thank you so much. I, I'm really enjoying the daily videos. It's a way for you all to get to know me and, and, uh, and then get to know, you know, uh, the art and also you know what I do and and through your comments and everything like that I even get to know you all even more which is a lot of fun hey Mike how's it going good to see you so this is great thank you guys for all being here okay now anyone here who wants to be part of my mailing list just go ahead and email me painted glyphs at gmail.com and if I do a video or something like that I'll email you letting you know so if you email me at paintingglyphs at gmail.com this way I can see you so you see what I did is I went ahead and erased a little bit because it wasn't uh, a dark shadow throughout her eye there under her eye you know Oh, yeah, you were missed last week, and uh, but thank you so much. Hey, Roy, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I do have fun editing videos. You know, it's, I enjoy it, and so I'm like remembering how much fun it was to shoot videos and edit. I have a, a better camera, like a more expensive camera, but I'm using this little Canon PowerShot for all the video, and it's uh, really working out well. It's, it kind of gives the, uh, a nice feel to the videos that it's not like a pro camera or anything like that, you know? Wow, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate that. Yes, there, yesterday, uh, yesterday's video, not today's, uh, I did a shout out to Steve's incredible live streams. They are on Mondays on Facebook. Hey, Mr. Kennedy, good to see you. How are you, my friend? So glad to see you. That's so great. Got a nice group here today. So as you can see, we're in the light mixture and we're just kind of sculpting, sculpting the light here. 
with a light mixture. It kind of makes sense. <laughs> uh, very cool. So, and Bill, thank you so much for your order of the Airbrush India inks. We will get that out to you. Hey, Chris, como estas, amigo mio? How's it going? Good to see you. So right now I'm just sculpting the shadow shape right here. And remember, you want to use your least aggressive eraser. You don't want to go straight in with this right here, the Perfection 7058. It's very rough. And remember, you always want to treat the paper as, as gentle as possible. You know, that's really important. And so, Bill, what's on the agenda? What's your next video going to be? I know you're working on something over there. So Bill does some incredible stuff as well. And that's W. Leon Artistry. And check that out. And let's see. There we go. And let's see. So, uh, so on your live, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow's, uh, Tomorrow's video journal, I'm going to talk a little more about the live stream that might be of help to you, Bill. So check that out when you can, okay? And so now that we uh, came in with the light mixture, let's come in with the medium mixture a little bit. Okay, we'll, we'll make this happen. Yes, they, they've definitely, all the... Uh, all the previous live streams are on my channel as well as my my um, as, as well as the live streams and also the airbrush diary is also there which is pretty cool and so it's right here on uh, painted Timothy John Luke Smith in YouTube so if you have any questions you email me and I'll be more than happy to help you on that Jerry and let's see And let's let's go here. Anytime, Jerry. So now I have the medium mixture. Remember, whenever I spray an airbrush after I change the color or for the first time, I always test on the spare spare paper as opposed to right on my work. So I have the medium mixture. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put in some of these rich darks of her eye there. Now remember, this is only the medium mixture. The dark mixture is going to make it even, even more pronounced. But we're taking our time, you know. So what I like in this technique is just something that slowly, slowly comes into focus. And that's what we want, to slow focus. There we go. That's pretty cool. Hey, Wendy, how are you? How's everything going? Good to see you. What kind of cake do you have today, Wendy? It's always great to see Wendy. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hey, Keith, how's it going? <laughs> you hear that, Wendy? He likes uh, rum cake. Keith likes rum cake, which is pretty cool. Peanut butters, that's an interesting cake. Do you actually make peanut butter cake? And does that exist? So you see, I can, I can really get in there. But So when you're putting in anything, you're not only going to worry about the value and the shape, but I want you to worry about how it borders with the shape next to it. Is it a soft edge? Is it a hard edge? Those are all things that we have to keep in keep in mind because that's where the real character of what you're painting lies. You can see I need a little more air, so I just adjusted that pack valve. So this is like super soft. So if you want a soft edge, the best way to get it is just increase the distance of the airbrush from the surface. And not only does it give you a soft edge, but also it gives you a beautiful gradation. So 
Let the airbrush do it. Hey, what's up, Bill? Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Thank you for the support, my friend. That's so exciting. Uh, very honored. Very, very honored. Thank you. So that's cool. And let's see. So now what we're going to do. So I have the light mixture. And you see I went here and did this value. But right next to that shape is a lighter shape. And I'm just going to try and... Now this is super subtle. So I increase my distance. Just like that. And then I'm just going to go right here. And it's like a little indentation uh, in her skin. And the light mixture is great for the real subtlety. That's where the light mixture comes up. Thank you, Wendy. And thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. And... Yes, you know, the um, blowing it up really helps helps everyone see it. So that's one of the great things about, about using a DSLR. Uh, when you do that, you have the ability to blow things up and everything like that. Now, I'm still in the medium mixture, so I'm not, I'm not going... Well, this is the light mixture. So what I'm going to do, everything we do in this eye, we got to do in the, we need to do in the other eye because we want to keep the painting going, coming in the same, coming together, right? So let's move over to this eye. And I'm just going to go ahead and check and make sure all the shapes are correct before I come in with the medium mixture. So this is like part four, we're like at the halfway point. That's when the medium mixture really makes an appearance and you start darkening the darks, you know, and that sort of uh, changes everything. So, uh, so once we darken those darks, everything seems to uh, lighten up on the mid-tones and the light areas. The highlights aren't there yet, but the mid-tones and the lights will really start to lighten up. So that's that's always something to keep in mind. And remember everyone, my one second rule, how crucial that is, because I know I'll be thinking about, you know, my food shopping on Thursday. I'll be thinking about whether the Falcons are gonna get destroyed this Sunday. Actually, they're playing Thursday. Oh my God, the Falcons. The Falcons are playing this Thursday. Hey Brad, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate that. Wow, what an honor. Thank you, sir. I really, really, really appreciate that. That's just so wonderful. And, you know, I don't take it lightly. It's, it's just so incredible. And I just love hanging out with you guys. I don't know what I would do on my Thursdays if I didn't have it. Uh, on today's, uh, what I'm filming today, tomorrow's uh, video, uh, Airbrush Diary, I talked about how many years I've been doing these live streams. And it's sort of a way of life now. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I can't imagine ever not doing them, you know? Oh, look at that. Yeah, that flying minion dude. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so that's really neat. So, uh, so Mr. Leahy, what are you working on right now? Something... Uh, Something interesting, always something interesting, but are uh, you doing any more fighter jets? That's, wow, so Bill says the first color painting he ever completed was Minions. How cool was that? Oh, man. How'd it go, like your very first color uh, foray into color? So I used to get those Walter Forster books. Who out there knows about the Walter Forster books uh, back in the day when they were like $2? So you see with the medium mixture, I'm able to get a little more, a little more power to those darks, right? And what's great about the Extreme Patriot Arrow and Extreme Patriot 105 is just the amount of detail that's possible, which is really wonderful. 
And I know Steve Johnson loves the part where I actually go in with the with the white pastel, but we have to be patient for that. This is what it's all building up toward. So all it's all building up for that uh, white pastel uh, at the last episode of this. Oh wow! So it took you a couple of days, and you really had no clue. That's the way to do it. Hey, Mr. Clancy, how you doing? So you and Brad had snow a couple of days ago up north of the border. That's pretty cool. And not cool when you have to shovel it, right? And, oh, Steve has a great painting coming up, an album cover that is an abstract and half realistic. Wow, is that a commission, Steve? That sounds amazing. Holy cow, that sounds like an 80s project almost, right? Has a real 80s sound to it. Minions, <laughs> they're political puppets. So, so Steve, uh, what do you think of uh, Patrick Nagel's work? And if you guys know who Patrick Nagel is, uh, he was kind of a pretty big influence on me. Still today, I feel his influence is on me. You know, when I simplify a lot of the shapes and stuff like that. So let's zoom out and see how the eyes are coming. So you see that a little more power in her eyes there, which is really nice. And now I can look at the big picture. Let's zoom in just a little bit and we can lighten up. So interesting. So when you have a camera and you zoom in, notice when you zoom out, it gets darker and you zoom, I mean, zoom out, it gets lighter and you zoom in, it gets darker. That's what every camera lens. As you zoom in, your aperture gets smaller, letting in less light. So that's why, uh, you know, as you're zoomed all the way out to like a 35 millimeter, all the light's coming in. But when you zoom to, let's say, 70, uh, the aperture gets smaller and there's less light. So you have to open that up. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> so... So Stephen Leahy slept with all his mom. I'm not Stephen Leahy. Sorry, Patrick Nagel. <laughs> not Stephen Leahy. Sorry about that. Patrick Nagel, right? Okay, cool. Hey, Gary Gold, how's it going? Good to see you. Oh my God! So it was such a great group today. I'm very honored. Look at all you guys. Just fantastic. So Patrick Nagel slept with all his his models. <laughs> Steve, that was I did not mean to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Marge would kill you. I did not mean to say that, okay? <laughs> you know, this is live. Anything could happen. Am I right? <laughs> oh, my God. Steve's going to get me back now, you know? I should have, like, a couple of seconds delay, so in case I do something really bad like that, I could just go back, you know, like uh, Janet Jackson's... Uh, Wardrobe malfunction, you guys remember that? Oh my goodness. Sorry about that, Steve. I did not mean that whatsoever. <laughs> All of a sudden, my subscriber rate went from 3,000 to like four. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right, I got a paint. Let's see. Let's make sure we go back. So it's good to see you, Gary. So glad that you're live here. You know, uh, Gary always watches the, the day after because he's from the UK. As many of our UK people, uh, that's what happens, you know. So, so right now I'm going to look at the big picture here. So there we go. So I can definitely see where. So you definitely want to look and ask yourself, you know, if you squint your eyes, are you seeing more or less? of a value range difference and if you're seeing less then you have to adjust that so right here i can see that i need to maybe relax some of these darks just a little bit so i'm just going to do little dagger strokes over the dark same thing here um, i just want to bring in some now i have the medium mixture right now and then right here, if I squint my eyes, the white of the eye here is almost negligible. It's not white at all. It's like a dark mark. 
Marge, if you're out there, it was completely accidental. I, you know, I, I had too much coffee today. Actually, I had two cups of coffee, but I did have green tea, so I am hopped up on caffeine. Hopped up on caffeine. I'm hopped up on caffeine and a, a turkey, uh, a turkey roast or tenderloin roast that I made, which came out pretty good, by the way, guys. As you see, I'm seeing a little more detail of how the form is turning, right? So we're always looking to see how the form turns, right? So since the light is coming from this way, we're going to always have things as it goes to upper right is going to get the light lower left gradually as you go lower left is going to get your shadows. And let's see, uh, Steve had too much to drink. <laughs> oh yes, the ex yeah, the leftover espresso iced coffee that I had, I made that. It's coming out pretty good, but I gotta lay off of it. I'm having too much coffee, you know? So what I'm going to do is I'm probably gonna stick to green tea after the morning. That's probably the best route. What do you guys do? How many cups of coffee do you guys drink? I know Brad doesn't drink any coffee. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no moonshine yet. So that strictly was a caffeine error. So that's funny. What was that? Uh, uh... Talladega Nights when he says he's all hopped up on Mountain Dew. I can't drink Mountain Dew, but that stuff, I used to drink that like it was water when I was a kid. Do you guys like Mountain Dew? Oh, so, oh, so, so Bill drinks pots and pots of it. Oh, and he's drinking coffee right now. Three in the morning, loves his coffee. <laughs> So you do a lot of work over the over the a.m. Is that correct, uh, Steve? Is that pretty much your uh, you work better at night? Well, look at that. Brad hadn't had a cup of coffee in over 30 years. I hate to try and watch Tim after he had a couple of belts of shine. Oh, my God. I'm Irish, so it's not pretty. You know, it's not a good thing. Uh, but I'm a happy drunk, so that's a good thing. So when I do drink, I'm just really jovial and good-natured. Some some people, when they drink, they, they, they want to fight the world. I don't. I, I, I want to hang out with the world. Pretty much with the way I am sober, but like more intense, you know? <laughs> Bill says he drinks coffee and he knows stupid things. <laughs> and Mike S. says that would be, uh, Chris says that would be funny as hell. Steve Leahy says, we Irish folk just get louder. You ain't kidding. And we start singing, even when we don't know how to sing. So I know I don't know how to sing. Um, however, Steve has a brother who sings Beatle hits that's just amazing. So shout out to him. He says... He drinks two cups of coffee a day. If he's going to paint, he'll have a half regular and half decaf. Oh, to keep your hands steady. So that's pretty cool. John gets sleepy and everything would look blurry and that would be from his view. <laughs> so that's what Mike says. And Bill says, I do have only drink it black. Oh, wow. So you're like a cowboy, Bill. My dad, you know, he drank only milk. And he was a big coffee drinker. He enjoyed it. You know, he and he really did. He was like a coffee lover that really never wanted flavored coffee, slave, flavored creamer. Just a good old-fashioned pot of coffee. Cheaper the coffee, the better, you know? <laughs> yes, that's right. Wow, Steve drinks it black, too. You guys are like cowboys, you know? It's like... I drink it black and I, I 
I don't know. I guess I like the idea of coffee, but I have to mask the flavor with hazelnut creamer from Aldi's, you know? Still with the medium mixture, I'm just deepening up some of these darks here. And let's go ahead and deepen the darks in her nose. So uh, let's zoom in on her nose here. There we go. Whoa, there we go. Okay, so. All right, so there we are. And yes, and uh, so uh, Wendy likes it uh, with creamer. That's cool. Nothing beats Spanish coffee. Spanish coffee is good. Un cafecito, como, como los cubanos, right? And Roy says, two cups of black coffee. Another coffee drinker who likes it black. You guys I admire. You guys are real coffee drinkers. Not me. Um, I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm a foo-foo coffee drinker who likes flavored creamers and all of that. So, so we got some real coffee connoisseurs here. Coffee cake. Nothing wrong with coffee cake, that's for sure. <laughs> and that's cool. It's cool that Brad doesn't doesn't uh, use it anymore. So that's cool. Yeah, you know, it is it is a stimulant. So, you know, so if we we don't have it, it's great. But, you know, there's worse things in the world. So we do we do love our coffee, that's for sure. And I do love green tea with lemon or lime, which is really fantastic. Raul mixes his vanilla protein shake in his coffee. That's smart. And look at tone, black, no sugar. This is like, you guys should have your own uh, black coffee live stream. That would be really cool. <laughs> you know, uh, start your own Facebook group, you know? That would be cool. Because you guys like real coffee drinkers. But they say when you drink coffee black, you can really taste the coffee. And you can taste the difference between good coffee and bad coffee. Is that true, guys? Mike says he used to do seven to ten cups of cappuccino per night. Now I can't drink it. Oh my God, you must have, you must have been wired, sir. So that's cool that you're not doing that anymore. You know, when we're younger, we can do a lot of things. I, I used to keep, when I was in my twenties and early thirties, and I was single back then before I got married. Subsequently, I'm divorced now. But in my twenties and thirties, I used to keep two cans of soda by my bed so when I woke up in the middle of the night if I got thirsty I'd just drink those sodas college exactly that's why I understand now there Mike uh, just chew on the beans <laughs> my guest says when he was working back 20 years ago he'd go through 30 cups a day holy cow and 30 that's amazing Wow, that's just the sheer logistics of that, Mike, is unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> he would be glowing up the land planes. <laughs> so you see, right now I'm going to make uh, this nostril a little richer. And I always want to squint my eyes because when I squint my eyes, I can see where I can go a little bit darker, like right next to it. And I can see the contrast more clearly. There we go. And just calm that down a little bit. Same thing here, still with the medium mixture. And just pulling that up a little bit there, you know. Gary says he loves the smell of coffee, but hates the taste, but likes a can of Red Bull. Wow, that's that's big time. An IV bag. Yeah, that would definitely get the coffee in there. <laughs> that's for sure. But as a society, we do love our coffee. Am I right? It's like no better way than to start the day with a good cup of coffee. So right now you can see that 
Let's move down to her lips there. And we're going to be working on this corner of her lip. And you can see that I was a little overzealous with the corner of her lip. And I need to fix that. I kind of put a line there that shouldn't be. So I know I'm going to come in with the aggressive because at this point, I don't think that the mono eraser would work. And so basically, there was no line there, even though I initially drew it. I got to get rid of it, you know? Oh, wow. Donuts with that coffee. That's pretty cool. Oh, you hear that? Is that a cop joke? Oh, my God. It's getting real up in here. <laughs> Bill says with too much coffee, freehand textures are natural. <laughs> Just not, might, may not be the textures you're looking for. Okay, so, so you see right now, I'm really working on that corner. It's important to me. Now, you're going to see some oversprays when I blow it up. That doesn't mean I don't have to be, uh, not oversprays, some, some spidering. It doesn't mean that I don't have to be careful. It's just it's not going to be visible to the naked eye. When you blow it up, you'll see things uh, normally not seen. Now, remember with the squinting of the eye, especially as the lips, uh, the, the, uh, the teeth sort of curl uh, away from the light source, right? Because the light source is in front of her from the upper right, right? So as it turns, even her, the cylinder of her lips, it's going to darken up. So I'm just going to darken that up right here. So you see, that's so important. Pumpkin pie, that's some good stuff. That's amazing. And wow, so yeah. And Raul says, Wendy, the, the caramel or the cookies and cream protein shakes are to die for. Wow, that's really cool. So it's so important to get that protein in you, right? So right here, even though I'm with the light mixture, I'm just going to get some of these shapes in her lip, her upper lip. And same thing on this side. Whatever we do on one side of her lips, we got to give attention to the other side. Not necessarily the same thing, but we just got to make sure we give attention to where attention's needed. And not, not play favorites to one side, you know what I mean? Which is very important. And Chris says he gets donuts for free. And uh, I wish I got donuts for free. But then again, I'm kind of addicted to donuts. That's why I don't eat them. Because I would, I would eat them. I would have like a whole dozen donuts easy. You know, Dunkin' Donuts. A good bakery. So, nothing like a cold Sunday morning and you go out and, you know, everyone's sleeping and you go out and you get like rolls and donuts at a bakery. That's fantastic. I used to love that. That's a nice surprise. You're like a hero, right? That's, you're the guy with the donuts and the rolls. Yay. You know, so that, that's always a plus. Okay, so now what we have to realize is that if you do see some areas that have more contrast, you definitely have to knock them down, right? So that's so important. So let's go ahead and knock this down a little bit. And we'll try it with the mono eraser, but again, I don't think I would be successful. So I'm gonna use this aggressive. It's the Perfection 7058. There are two of them, did you know that? Let me zoom out here to show you. So there are two of them. There's the 7058B, which has a brush on it. And then there's the 7058. I found that the 7058 without the brush is just a little more aggressive than this one with the brush. Have you guys found that as well? Patty, good to see you. How are you? So great to see you. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate that. And 
Let's see. And so what we have to do, and we have to just lighten that up a little bit because it's very soft edge. And I went a little hard edge on the corner of her mouth. So all those considerations really, and then over here, well, uh, I can soften up the edge here of her lip there. And those are really important things, those little tiny things that are just crucial. And I'm going to come back in with the light mixture and let's blow back up into the lips there. So I started doing, as, as you guys know, and those who haven't, I started doing an airbrush diary every day. So my plan, and I'm hoping, is to do it every day until December 1st and just go over you know what it's like to uh, work on commissions and what it's like to uh, paint every day and uh, all different things digital art and everything and what it entails also the reason why i'm doing it is i want to get more comfortable in front of the camera and i figure if i if i do one every day for like a month or so i really think i'll get comfortable and my delivery will be better, my videos will be better, and it will be better for for you all. So that's exciting. So it's a win-win situation. So that's, that's uh, why I'm doing it. I'm going to dust over her teeth in the bottom because the lower teeth are darker than the upper teeth, her upper teeth. Okay, now her, you know, I really love, oh, Mike has an airbrush question. Pers Perfect. And what is that question, my friend? I'm all ears. Yes, Willie, you were talking about the 7056, correct. This is the one that's like a pink pearl inside. That's a pretty good one, too, definitely. And let's see. So, so yeah, I do love this one, too, because it's right in the middle of the road. A little bit more aggressive than the mono wouldn't you say guys and let's see so now we're just going to just slowly darken up the corner of her mouth that goes in a little bit oh we were doing the uh we were definitely working on her cupid's bow and right here just on the outside. Remember, this is facing the light just a little bit. So we're just going to see a little more light over there because it's facing it, you know? Oh, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. Definitely will message you my address. Thank you, sir. And oh, wow, that would be great. Thank you so much, Bill. I really appreciate that. Uh, those mini monos work great. They sure do, right? They're really fantastic. I really love them, the Mono Zero. And so you see right here, let me come down a little bit. You can see that a little bit of light is, we're, we're light detectives, right? That's what we are, light detectives. And so we're just trying to figure out what the light is doing here and why, right? So that's really important. And then in here, there's a little bit of sort of luminous, luminosity, if that's a word. Um, luminosity in the lips here. We're just going to put that in. And it looks kind of rough, doesn't it? But that's okay. That's because it's blown up. So that's, that's interesting. And let's see. So I'm going to go back in with the medium mixture. And we got a long time for this to finish. So one of the things are, when you're painting, please never never be in a rush to finish it, okay? Take your time. Um, unless you have a, a commission, and that's a different story. But still, talk to your people and just tell them, hey, can I have a little more time because I want to do the best job possible. You just don't want to rush. And number one, you want to make sure that you're having fun. Look at this beautiful fine line I can get with this, which is just 
just amazing. This is a beautiful fine line. So now when we zoom out, so I have the medium mixture and I'm just going to uh, give a little depth to her lip here. Now we haven't even popped things out with the light yet and that's going to be great when we do that. Okay, so now that that's done, you can see how how much better her lip is actually coming, falling into place, you know. And Mike says he's upgrading the Patriot 105 with the super detail set to 0 0.35. And, and we'll add on a Mac valve. Will that give me sufficient small details capability? I can only tell you my, my experiences. Now, if you're going to be working big... I want you to get the Extreme Patriot Arrow, uh, Extreme Patriot 105. I want you to get this one with the big cup. Now, if you're going to, you know, if you want something with even more precision and have, you know, no obstruction, so get the smaller cup, the Extreme Patriot Arrow. The Extreme Patriot Arrow. They're the same body and everything, except this has a bigger cup and this has a more streamlined appearance. So, why would you want this airbrush as opposed to, let's say, another airbrush? And I'll tell you why. If you go ahead and you zoom in, you will see how far that needle comes out, right? So look, look at how far that needle comes out. This will give you the most amazing, amazing strokes in ever. So let me show you. So. I'm going to zoom in and we'll zoom in on just what kind of detail you're able to get. Now that's done with a paintbrush, right? A regular paintbrush. And I'm going to look at that. Now if you know that's smaller than the pencil. Now why is that? Of course, it's well made. It has a really nice nozzle uh, configuration, but this is like a, this is not like a 0.18 or anything like that. The beauty is in the distance. Now, when you're ready to purchase it, I want you to email me because there's some things that I can actually tell you to modify this airbrush to make it even more powerful as a detailed airbrush. I also have a 15% off code. And that 15% off code at usaairbrushsupply.com. Let me show you. This is the best place to get it. www.usaairbrushsupply.com. Now, I've been working on, working with these airbrushes for going on over two years. About, yeah, I would say two years now. I've been working with the Badgers. And I'll tell you six hours a day sometimes eight and i would not trade them for anything that's my personal opinion and i can give you my word only now if you ever go on there and you want a discount this goes for everyone if you type in the code timothy psa you get 15 percent off and no don't be sorry mike this is what the live streams are all about the live streams are all about helping you guys and uh, making airbrush fun again, you know, that's what I want to do. I really, it breaks my heart when a lot of, I hear about artists who, you know, have airbrushes and they're just gonna, they're just so tired of them and they want to draw them away. And, oh, wow, thank you, Chris, I appreciate that. And, and thank you, Brad. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's a great airbrush. So I would start with one of them. And, you know, and you let me know and I'll go ahead and uh, help you with uh, how to really soup that up. Gary says he has a harder in Steenbeck Evolution with a 1.5 needle and his Badger Extreme gets the same, if not finer line, but blends so much better. Thank you for that, Gary. Yes, that is such a uh, wonderful testimony. And the testimonies keep coming, guys. I mean, and the fact is with my code, like a, less than a hundred dollars and you're getting in my opinion you're getting 
you're getting stuff that you know just the uh, micron was able to get so I really am happy with it now uh, and I'll tell you exactly how I feel whether it's good or not so here's a good question Patty says how does it compare with the SOTAR 2020 I don't think it the SOTAR 2020 comes close to this I think the SOTAR 2020 is good but it's not for fine detail so this would you know what comes close to it is the SOTAR slim the SOTAR 2020 slim comes close to this and also I love the fact that it's really streamlined it doesn't have uh, a cup so it's like working with a mechanical pencil so I really am love with the SOTAR 2020 slim not so much with the SOTAR 2020 uh, Yeah, thanks, Brad. Definitely. You want to soup that up, you know, and that's fantastic. The super detail net, uh, Mike says he thought a super detail needle setup was 0 0.22. Uh, I think it's still the 0 0.30, if I'm not mistaken, or the 0 0.35. And, um, but it's all in how much the needle comes out. So that is the secret. That is definitely what makes this what makes this tick you know and so definitely uh if you have the means i say go ahead and go for it you'll be very happy like i said if you work big and you need a lot then go with the extreme patriot uh extreme patriot arrow uh, extreme patriot 105 extreme patriot arrow if you work small like i do but I find myself really, okay, here's a caveat. The airbrush that I use is definitely for thin paints. You're not going to use it if you're a t-shirt artist, right? Because the fact of the matter is it's a detail airbrush just like the uh, micron, microns are. So if you want to work big and you're a t-shirt artist, this is worth its weight in gold this is the vega 1000 i really love it uh here's the one with a small cup there's one with a big cup two things i really love about this airbrush first thing is you know there's like uh like there's a needle packing in here the vegas are the one airbrush by thayer and chandler it doesn't have anything it's just a straight tube hole in the metal going all the way to the front and that means that it's like the best workhorse. It's going to clog glass. And I think it comes with a 0.5. Really recommend this Vega. I fell in love with it, you know. Willie says, if you drop it on the floor, sometimes the needle comes out more. <laughs> yeah. Or less, depending. <laughs> right? That's true. And Willie says he loves the Sotar Slim. Yes, Sotar Slim. It's like working with a mechanical pencil, I have to say. If you get a chance to work with the SOTAR Slim, you'll really enjoy it. And this I use for the background, instrumental, because you have a great atomization. And when you're working on backgrounds, it's perfect. So, so Mike uses the stylus. Okay, Mike uses stylus. Now what's the stylus? Let's see. Just taking a water break, guys. So we hit 21 concurrent viewers today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for making this a successful live stream already. So with the medium mixture, I know I still have to smoothen things up a little bit. But right now, if I squint my eyes, I can see a little more detail right here. So you want to see those value shapes, right? You really do. You want to see those value shapes. And you want to see how they border, you know? Like Kansas borders Wisconsin. No, Kansas borders Missouri, right? And <laughs> geography, oh boy, not good. Yes, that's one thing that Willie had said, that the, uh, that, all the Badgers and the Thayer and Chandlers are really inexpensive to fix. 
So now I'm gonna look at my painting as a whole here. And let me just zoom out just a little bit. There we go. Notice like when you zoom out, it gets lighter. And that's because uh, the aperture or the f-stop uh, lets in more light. Okay, so right here, it's much darker. So I'm gonna be about seven inches from the surface. And I'm sort of gonna get rid of any kind of contrast that doesn't belong there. And that's what we do, we get rid of the contrast, which is really great. Uh, Mike says, uh, the other Mike said he hates typing on the phone. Oh, I see, definitely. Chris says his Grex trigger action is awesome for large background work. Oh, that's cool. I heard good things about Grex, right? You know what I love? I love the green. I love those green handles. I always thought they were really fascinating. So, so Steve and Mike, how do you feel? How does a Grex feel in the ecosystem of airbrushes? Are they rougher, smoother? What's your opinion? So this is where we get great insight on different airbrushes. Brazier parts are hard and expensive over here in the UK. Well, if you ever need me to get some, some parts for you, Gary, and that goes for any of my UK friends, I can purchase those parts for you and send them on over and you just reimburse me. So I don't want you to feel like you're, you know, you have somebody with a connection with badge, you guys, and I could always help you. So uh, definitely let me know, Gary. Uh, that's, that's important. That's what friends have to do for each other. And yeah, so definitely, I can definitely, you know, you know, with the discount code, get a 15% off and then we can save so much money shipping it to you. Yeah, so that's rough. So Chris says, uh, uh, oh, oh, anytime, Gary. So that offer stands forever. So you let me know. So here I am with my... Uh, mono eraser and I'm just gonna start moving around a little bit more and but as you see I'm just developing things and not really trying to invent a wheel or to make things totally perfect at this point just going slow so Brad says the freight's a real killer now with COVID and all yeah that's for sure everywhere right and Chris says he just ordered trigger happy accessories, airbrush covers, and coast airbrush for his Patriot. Let's see how that works out. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. So definitely I want to hear more about that, Chris. And it's okay. So I have the light mixture, and I erased it right there. And you see that's counterproductive. So with the light mixture, I'm just going to calm that down. One of the things is I want you to go ahead and practice shooting your airbrush as much as possible. Uh, and, you know, and then your aim gets better. One of the things I like doing is just circles, uh, painting circles uh, with the airbrush. And, uh, you know, L's, lowercase L's, dagger strokes, yes, dots, fading lines. I want you to really, and it's not something that, you know, with the aim and everything like that, that's just muscle memory. So uh, the more you practice, the more you're going to get it, you know. It's going to come together for you. See right there, the cupid's bow, that's a little too powerful there. So um, if I want to dust something back, I'm probably going to be about four inches away. And I'm just going to spray the light mixture just to dust that back, which is really cool. And so Mike says he's not too happy about coast shipping charges and uh, let's see Mike S says they wanted 20 bucks to ship stencils yeah Mike we know but not too many airbrush distributors out there I hear that definitely but don't forget that I'm I'm starting to sell some accessories on my website paintedglyphs.com if uh, you take a look at that if you get a chance guys I just started selling these pink pearls and also these really great uh, liner brushes. I started selling them, the Cotman's. So, and also, if you haven't gotten one of these Fonz and Porters, 
this is a lifesaver. I know that Steve Lakey just ordered one of these yesterday, so that's exciting. Once you have the funds in order, you'll never go back. Trust me. Uh, spray gun is great. Yes, free shipping. That's fantastic. Yeah, I get my reducer from them. My 4011. That's what I mix to use my white mixture. 4011. And, of course, Drew Blair's 5050 Illustration White, which is just fantastic. Yeah, that's true. Spray Gunner is fantastic. Very good customer service. Am I right, everybody? Just fantastic customer service. And they seem like a good bunch of guys. I know, I like Coast, too. I think they're really nice at Coast, and, uh, you know, they're great, and... They are great for the airbrush community. They have been the torch bearers, right? So every once in a while, I'll throw an order out to Coast too, just to show them a little bit of love. They don't have to show me love for me to show them love. And, but yeah, I hear you. You know, it's hard because, hey, we're out in the East Coast, they're in the West Coast. So it's kind of rough, the shipping charges, right? When you're out here. Yeah, Bill likes uh, likes Coast, and, you know, Dave Monning is a really great guy. I like him. Shout out to Dave Monning. Uh, I don't get to talk to him much, but I really appreciate everything that he does. I really do. So thanks, Dave, for if you, not that you're watching this, but, you know, if someone, uh, just let him know how much we appreciate him here and what he does. I really do. Okay, so the Needed Eraser. The Needed Eraser is fantastic. I don't know if you used it out there, but the reason they call it a Needed Eraser because you can knead it into different shapes. And it usually comes in a really huge square. This is half of it. And I see sometimes people using the whole big square, and that's always bad. So you want to cut it into a manage manageable little piece. The great thing about the Need Eraser is that it basically has a zero footprint, meaning that when you erase, it doesn't leave any kind of marks. It really is gentle on the surface, you know, which is really fantastic. And so Mike had to buy a nozzle for his Tamiya Spraywork 2. Wow, 32 bucks for shipping. Yeah, I think a lot of that has to do with you know, with the distance from the West Coast and everything like that. It's not easy, right? That's for sure, you know? But, uh, yeah, we always got to find the best price we can, of course. And no one can blame you for that, especially with shipping. No one can blame you for that. Okay, so now I see that... I tried to erase with the mono, and I want to pull that out and get that shape. So, um, probably going to try this one, the one that Willie talked about, which was the 7056. It looks like a pink pearl in there. Let's try that. The one second rule is going to keep my head in the game and not think about, you know, how much the Falcon's going to lose by tomorrow. And... Let's see if that does the trick. It might. Now the needed eraser didn't do the trick, of course. Okay, so we're gonna go to the next aggressive, would be this guy right here, the 7058B. We're working on paper, so you wanna, even when you're working on, let's say, not just paper, but if you're working on, on wood, you always want to be very uh, protective of your surface. You don't want to dig into it unnecessarily. Okay, so we're back here and we're going to see if this, this seems like it's doing the trick. But you see we worked up to this aggression, right? This aggressive eraser not coming in. Just these little lines here really goes a long, long way, right? A very long way. There we go, and perfect. And Chris says it doesn't help. Uh, UPS, yeah, that's true. Uh, I think they might use UPS because of the 
tracking information and a lot of companies actually have a deal with UPS when I used to work for a company called diapers.com they use UPS because they give them like a deal that ends up being cheaper than uh, than USPS so that might be why they they're opting for that there we go since I have this eraser out I'm just going to look and see where I could utilize its strength right here there we go and and don't worry if it's not coming out if it's not looking like her just yet that's okay we're fine with that right doesn't have to look like her my guess so is a lot, a lot of mini guns are out of out of this world in price oh I see and and John says spray gunner is expensive for shipping well, I'm pretty inexpensive for shipping, right? Only five dollars. <laughs> so I and if you order your 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 inks, it's it's uh, only five dollars to the UK. So I think I have everyone beat. Uh, I don't want to make money on shipping. I actually pay, some of the shipping costs I pay for, you know, because I want to help you guys out. So I'm not really out to, uh, you know, I want to make money because I like eating. Eating's delicious. And I find that, you know, I want to eat later. But I make sure that I pay part of the shipping for each order. And that's something you'll find. So when, when someone orders for me, I actually pay part of the shipping. So even like if you're, like if you're doing an order here in the States... And shipping for me, I think, is $5. Sometimes that shipping could go up to as much as $8. But I don't care because I, you know, I, I want to, you know, help out you guys too, you know. They actually dropped the, oh, I see. Willie says he's got to be honest. Coast prices are nuts and they kill you with shipping too. Wow, Coast is not very popular tonight. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Coast, I hope you're listening. So maybe maybe they could address this. You know, maybe that would be a good idea for them. Because it seems like it's a pretty unilateral concern. And that's important, you know, if it's a unilateral concern. Uh, I think that's... Oh, the TH is amazing. Okay, cool. I never used a spray gun before. I used a ray gun. No, I didn't. Uh, I did have one of those little ray guns as a kid, but it wasn't operational, and it had to do with didn't have to do with airbrushing. But I remember Ronald ray gun. There we go, and we'll just pull this down. Okay, now it's time to, so we're always moving around, right? We're always looking for areas, like when I have my classes and I tell my student, we always ask ourselves, okay, where in the world, uh, where in the world, or where in my painting am I neglecting? So I say that to myself, and that's why I say it to my students. So I think we're neglecting right here in the chin area. So let's go ahead and let's address that a little bit. And we're going to look at the shapes. We're going to look at the shapes and the edges at the same time. And we're going to concentrate on, on the shapes and the and the edges and if it's soft edge we're going to just increase our distance from increase our distance the airbrush from the surface remember you want to paint in three dimensions and you want the airbrush to do the hard work you don't want to do the hard work so that's why rather than you know lower air pressure and everything just go a little further away from the surface with the airbrush and there you go and you have that really soft so i'm with the light mixture right now and we're doing super subtle adjustments here. And when we come in with the white pastel, these are even going to get more subtle. There we 
go. And so here's interesting. So as we're working, I can see that um, there's a little bit of a hair going here. So let's see, right here, we have a little bit of a hair just right there. Remember, I always start with the with the most or least aggressive of erasers. So you see that that kind of kind of really helps because it looked too large over here with without that. So you'll see now I have the medium mixture and it's a nice dark right next to it. So let's go ahead and adjust that. And as it goes soft into this mid-tone, I'm just gonna increase my, my distance and I get that nice softness there. See that? There we go, nice and soft. And then over here on this side of the Cupid's bow, we'll darken that. So you see, we were neglecting this, right? Definitely, we definitely were neglecting that. So let's see, what have I missed? Chris says he needs to come to Ohio. You guys have a lot of toys out there. <laughs> That's cool. And Bill says uh, he used the LPH80, but got stolen from other, oh wow, that's horrible. So sorry to hear that. Yeah, I need to learn about spray guns more. That's for sure. That's the one thing. I work small, so I don't really utilize the large spray guns, but would love to play around with them. That's for sure. Okay, so we'll blow up here and we'll blow up on the chin. And what we're going to do, let's zoom out just a tad. There we go. And we'll go down. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, and I have my reference here in Pure Ref, which is actually the same size. So that's the great thing about Pure Ref, is that you can make it the same size as your reference. Your reference could be the same size as your painting. So you can blow that up. So I have the light mixture here because I want to slowly uh, get this value. I'm not in any rush. And it's a little darker here, a little darker here. And now I could move over here. And okay, so you see you have this coming down and coming up right parallel with that lip. See that with the lower lip? There's a dark that's parallel with that lower lip. Oh, there it goes, just as you said that, Willie. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, I guess I wasn't spraying that much. I had, oh, I also have, you know, the 25 PSI, and right now I kind of lower, lower the uh, air pressure a little bit with the pack valve, so that's probably what's doing it. So right here, you can see I was way too light here so I got to calm down this area and I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a dusting right because a dusting actually from a longer distance like three to four inches you can get a real soft gradation and still and when you're further away you know you're not gonna lose any kind of detail any textural detail so that helps so if you want to save your detail then paint further away okay because your, your ink or your paint is going to be more transparent. So that's a pretty cool insight. So I hope that helps. And that's what the live streams are all about. I learned from you. You learn from me. And we get to talk about airbrushing and cake and all kinds of good things, you know. Oh, wow. How cool. All right, so you see, now I can even darken this up a little bit. So I'm gonna decrease my distance, and this way I could darken up this chin here. 
So now when we zoom out, I'm not quite ready yet. Now when we zoom out, we'll see that the chin's starting to come together. And you might see some blotchiness at this point. Don't worry about it. That's not important. What's important is that you stick with the program of getting the values and the contrasts and the edges. So that's all you have to worry about. So just stick with that and you'll be okay. So everything's going to smooth out in time. Of course, you want to you want it to look as beautiful as you can, but you know, don't be concerned about that. It's going you have plenty of time to smooth things out, you know? Oh, GTO, is that a car? So GTOs are amazing, I remember, right? They're muscle cars, if I'm not mistaken. So light mixture, I'm going to model her, this shape here. Now it's not, see the thing is the light's coming from this way, right? So as her cheek is facing front, it's, it's, still getting light but not as much as the cheekbone which is right facing the light so you see that so we have to make that turn if we don't make it turn and she's not going to be in that in that situation of where direction the light is coming from so we have to recreate that so that's why we paint the light and not the likeness okay that's a very important remember that paint the like and not paint the light and not the lightness that is in a very crucial timism that's right up there with the one second rule for importance so now we have this uh, really big area you see that we have this part of the cylinder of her mouth Yes, correct. It is facing the light even more over here uh, than the cheekbone, but this area right here is starting to turn towards us. So just like this value here, it's kind of re going to reproduce itself over here. When you're painting and when you're painting and you see, let's say, uh, similar values in the face more often than not those similar values because they're facing the same they're at the same angle to the light source so so this value right here and this value are very similar because they're facing the light source or or at the same angle from the light source if that makes sense I hope I articulated that well So I'm with the light mixture. So you see I the two airbrush method, it's important to really jump from light mixture to dark mixture rather quickly. So if you only had one airbrush and you would hold off or you might be using the uh, light mixture when you could should be using the medium mixer and vice versa, right? So Willie says, Tim, I have to add that one I have to add that one to the book of Tim. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Paint the light and not the likeness. So important. And uh, that's, I think, is uh, really something that I have to... Every Timism I have to drill in my head when I'm painting, Willie. I mean, because, you know, our minds are like a colander, right? We get information and then it starts leaking. <laughs> And I know for me it starts leaking, so I have to constantly reiterate that. If I don't, I'll start doing things and and lose that insight that I that I have. It's like geometry, right? You know, you have all these postulates and theorems, and you have to completely you have to keep look towards them because if you don't, then geometry is not gonna not gonna make sense. You need to have those postulates and theorems uh, pretty much readily available. 
So you see now we're going to do this uh, cylinder of, of her lips here, of her mouth, the cylinder, which is just above her mouth. So this is a fun part because this is the part that's really going to start getting her likeness and really is going to start uh, it's going to start giving the likeness and really start to give the form a turn. So Gary says you drill it in our heads but in a good way. <laughs> I'm kind of like a drill sergeant, right? The airbrush drill sergeant, right? So but that's that's what I had, you know, when Harvey Dinnerstein and other teachers such as Erwin Greenberg and Ron Schur. I mean, they, they're great and shout outs to them because they would come by and if I was doing something I wanted to get away with, they would say, you know better than that. You know, why are you, why are you not putting in that light and why are you ignoring this area which might be more difficult? So they wouldn't let me get away with it. So that's why as a teacher, I don't let my students get away with anything because, because then it's almost like we're really fooling ourselves, right? More than anything. Oh, okay. So uh, Chris says that uh, he has free donuts waiting for him. In the <laughs> Hope to catch you all next weekend. Oh, thank you so much. And Go into Tamco. That's very good. Chris, thank you for all you do. And thank you for protecting us. And I really, really, really appreciate you, my friend. So you have a great night. And I haven't forgot you with that shipment. I'm going to get that out to you ASAP. It's just been real crazy here. John says, can you zoom out uh, so, so you can see some from further away? Of course, definitely. So I'll zoom out. Uh, as well so but I can't zoom out too far probably like about there would you like to see that uh, 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 John a little zoomed out for a little bit I can do that I have been zoned out that I have been doing uh, so uh, let's see Gary says every mistake he makes here's he hears my voice telling me why it went wrong <laughs> But I also want you to hear my voice when it goes right, too. So that's cool. Oh, that helps see the whitening. Oh, no problem. Sure. And so what I'm going to do is uh, really start making these areas turn more. So with the light mixture, I'm going to hit those really subtle mid-tones, right? Very important. But that one second rule keeps me from, from getting lazy, right? Because I have to look for a second and then paint for a second. So I'm looking exactly where I'm going to paint and then I'll paint. So you see that? That's so important. And then over here, so we darken that and it seems like it makes it so we have to darken this area too, right? So you see how she's starting to come together. I have it too white here because when I squint my eyes, this there's a, too much of a contrast. So I'm going to be about six inches, seven inches from the surface. And I'm just going to lightly dust down with the light mixture over here. And uh, just bring everything uh, into value range that it should be, you know. And let's see, who else said good night here? Uh, Willie, have a good night, my friend. Oh, no, Willie's not leaving yet. I think he was saying good night to somebody else. Okay, cool. Wendy fell asleep at the, at the, at the keyboard, I think. And, uh, <laughs> I look for the gasoline. That's cool. Okay, so, so, we're just going to be a good six inches away. And I'm just gonna dust that down a little bit. And that will actually be a good thing and also over here we could make this turn over here just a little bit so all these different things hey John have a good night my friend take care but I don't think John was leaving yet he was just saying good night to Willie and uh, Wendy you're back and this time it's personal how you doing? Good to see you. 
Yes, lucky, luck, your son's lucky for you to cook for him and blessed. I appreciate that. That's really cool. Wendy's the best. So I have the medium mixture. I'm just going to darken this just a little bit. And so here's an interesting spot. So right here, you see it's just a little bit lighter. This is where the cheek comes. See, when things turn, they turn from the light to dark, right? Gradually. From this side, from up and down, and from right to left. But you see right here, all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden right here, it sort of jumps out, right? And that means that a new form is starting. So what we want to do is we want to uh, just start that new form right here. And we are going to use the least aggressive eraser to do the job. See that? And of course we're going to refine it as, but right now we're just painting the light, not the likeness. That comes later. And we'll get there. No rush. We're in no rush to get there, you know? And when you feel like you're in a rush to get there, that's when you gotta, as Emerald said, well, he says turn it up a notch, but we wanna turn it down a notch, right? We wanna slow things down. And so important to slow things down. It really is when you feel like you're getting excited and you're like, yes, it's looking great. And you get excited and we all do that. And all of a sudden we're like, I did not want to do that. And what in the world happened there? That doesn't look like, you know, that doesn't look like, that doesn't look like her because we weren't painting the light. We're getting too excited. So light mixture, moving here. And so, and let's zoom in again. There we go. And you know, when you zoom in, of course, you lose some light. So always remember that. And you gain light when you zoom out. That's interesting. That's just aperture talk, you know? So Brad says, it sounds like all the coffee drinkers are confused. Mike S. says, hey, did anyone buy that new Badger Sidewinder airbrush? It basically is the same exact airbrush as the factory specs on the Extreme Patriot Arrow, just the side feed. So nothing different. If you're in love with side feeds, Mike, I would say get that, you know? Um, you know, and I've never used it yet, uh, but I'm not a side feed guy. And you guys know why, because I work on a, on a horizontal surface. And by working on a horizontal surface, you're like, uh-oh, you know, if I have a, you know, a side feed, disaster could strike. And believe me, it has struck when working horizontally. For vertical painters, I think it's fantastic. And I do love the Micron has a beautiful, has the Micron, the HP SBS. This is the Eclipse side feed is a beautiful airbrush. Wendy has one, right? Do you like that one, Wendy? I loved it, I sold mine. And uh, to a very happy customer. Oh, the side views. Yeah, the side views are fantastic. Um, I do recommend a side, uh, a side view, uh, side feed is the, um, the Thayer and Chandler Omni. Let me see if I can get them for you. The Thayer and Chandlers, they're really good airbrushes. I'll be right back, my friend. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. So here are two side feeds, which I really like. This one is the Omni 3000, right? This, this is a side feed, the Omni 3000 by Thayer and Chandler. Really smooth, beautiful detail. You have a big cup over here and I really love it. Uh, Thayer and Chandler, they really have a very smooth 
uh, inside to these airbrushes, which once you use the Thayer and Chandler, same thing as the Thayer and Chandler Vega 1000, they have a beautiful smoothness to them. And yes, yeah, so this one is the 6000, very, very true. Uh, and Brad has the Vega 2000, which is great. Now, also, there is another one. This is not a side fee, but this is an Omni as well. This is the Omni 4000. And this is a real beautiful airbrush. Uh, so those are, if you're going to get a side feed, I would probably pick this one. Uh, but that's just my own opinion. But, you know, just to, just to uh, see what the Thayer and, Chandler, Thayer and Chandler family are like, you know. They're also uh, owned and manufactured by, by Badger, and you can get them as well. Uh, so, so, yes, yeah, so this one right here, the, the, the top feed is the Omni 4000. And let me see if I can show you. Where is it? Okay. Uh, yeah, so this one's the Omni 4000. And then this one, and I think you are correct, my friend, Mike. It is the Omni 6000. Just beautiful, beautiful airbrushes. I love them. Uh, but you know what my first love is. I don't have to tell you. Um, but definitely side feeds are great. They really are uh, just beautiful. But like I said, I am a horizontal painter, so I'm not the best candidate for them. Uh, so I would not use them too often unless I'm in the other studio. So I have the medium mixture in here. And now I'm going to start to put in some. Now here's really great. Sometimes uh, without... Better than using freehand shields is this cutout here. And so you see, I can actually use that instead of a freehand shield to get the exact. Now, how great is that, right? That's fantastic. So we can, we don't have to worry about, you know, uh, a freehand shield and finding the right contour. We have the right contour already. We just have to place it there and go away, spray away from the, away from the actual edge so it goes out. But if you go this way, it could get underneath and you don't want that to happen, you know? So, oh great. So Roy says the Vega 2000 is a fine airbrush. It really is. I love the Vega 2000 and Brad uses it and I know now that Roy has it. Just a great airbrush all around. So, so now we have work to get work to do. So remember, we always want to look and ask ourselves, okay, where am I, where am I neglecting, right? So I have my, my light mixture in my Extreme Patriot Arrow. So I'm going to see like right here, up here on this edge here, I'm definitely Definitely neglecting. So I'm just going to zoom out just a tad here. And let's go ahead. And let's not get, I don't want to get, for me, I don't want to get sidetracked. So I want to concentrate on this area. So I don't want to get sidetracked with other detail. So I want to say to myself, okay, I got to stay here because I've been in other areas and I haven't really paid much attention to this area here. So it's time to really, for me to concentrate. And so we have some dark shapes right here, right, with the light mixture. And we can always go darker. Now we have a beauty mark. Now this is where, you know, when you have things like a beauty mark, I don't want you to go ahead and just, you know, guess and put it in with the airbrush. Your pencil's your best friend. And so let's figure out exactly where that beauty mark is. So I see it's uh, a little bit further out, sort of like the game Battleship. We're just gonna coordinate, right? And so it's a little further out, so it's along this axis point. And then it's just above the nostril. So I would say right about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just 
put this right there with the pencil and now I'm going to and I'm going to really increase my distance because I want that to be super soft right so now I'm going to let that dry for a second because now I, I don't have to worry about hitting it with the ink because if, it, if I don't, ugh, you know, it's not good. Our, our, air, hose, our air hoses are 1.8, that's correct. Mine is because I started out in the Iwata world. So all my hoses and my quick connects were 1.8, so that's why I went with the 1.8 adapters on the Badger. I was an Iwata guy for many years and very happy with Iwata. I thought they were doing great. They still are. It's just, uh, you know, Badger has, you know, really, really shown me how great their airbrushes are. And so I'm a real fan of theirs. And they're a friend and sponsor to this channel. So that's... So that's why I'm... I'm big on Badger, you know? And, oh, Patty, have a great night. I hope you don't work too hard tomorrow. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate that so much. Always great to talk to you. And so we're going to continue working on this, right? So I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit, maybe make it smaller later. So we'll continue moving around. And remember, I'm gonna, I don't want to get sidetracked by doing other detail because I have been neglecting this area for quite some time. So I want to rectify that situation. So this is very light with the light mixture. I'm going to increase my distance to about four inches. And you see, I'm looking with the one second rule and seeing where it needs to be a little bit darker, right? And looking at this shape and also seeing that wow I really that's a very much lighter than I need it to be so I'm gonna increase my distance and I'm just gonna dust that light area like that just to calm it down a little bit we can always come back with white pastel if it turns out to be it needs more but yeah I have to calm this down so you know there's too much contrast in the forehead and that's something we have to work on, you know. Uh, Bill says, well, you guys have a fantastic night and toss those thumbs up for Tim. Thank you so much, Bill. Always a pleasure, my friend. And thank you so much for the gift. I really appreciate that. And that is a great honor. So I hope to see you soon, sir. So, and, uh, and look under W. Leon Artistry. If you haven't subscribed to W. Leon Artistry, he does some really great live, not, not, he does live streams and he's going to do more live streams, but he has great tutorials on color and stuff like that that I don't do. So that's something to look at. So go ahead and make sure you do that. Uh, that's w, uh, w. Leon Artistry. Type that in in, uh, in YouTube search and you'll find him. Definitely subscribe. Because you'll see that, you know, there's a lot of great information. He does videos like every week, sometimes twice a week, you know. So there's always something good coming from him. And so, okay, so you see how we're starting to, you know, right here was important to darken that down. And even dust it down a little bit. Too much contrast. So I'm going to zoom out, right? And remember, when you zoom out, there's more light, so you may have to calm that down by lowering the aperture a little bit. And then I could ask myself with my reference, okay, so there's definitely too much contrast over here, so I can calm that down. It's much darker up here, right? And then what we can do, since we are working on this area, is we can come in with the medium mixture and just give a little more strength, you know? And that's what we're gonna do. Just a little more strength here with the medium mixture and we can get a nice dark, you know? So uh, we're gonna use our freehand shield here. And remember, perpendicular and not parallel. Always make sure you clean off your freehand shield after every use because you're going to have 
some paint or ink on there. And if you don't clean it off and place it right back, you're just going to put paint where you don't want it. And that's going to change your work from just painting to uh, damage control. You don't want to do that, of course. So you see, by doing perpendicular, not parallel, you get an even, even value that you decide where it stops. And that's, see, so you rather go out with the one second rule, you can see how far that dark goes out. See that? So now, by putting in that dark, now all of a sudden, you really feel like that hair is in front, right? That hair has to feel like it's in front of, of her. And that's important. With the medium mixture, we're putting a little more energy into the darks, and the light has more energy and then we're actually setting up for the dark mixture and then the white highlights it's going to look really great and okay so right here you can see in the eye it's a little it's a little strong so we need to calm that down reverse of what emerald says turn it down a notch right that's what we have to do turn it down a notch and same thing here the value we can turn that down you can turn this down a little bit. So we're looking at the large shapes. And although we want to have that eye popping out, but if it's in shadow, we have to make sure that we, uh, we have to make sure that we don't put in what we want to see, but what we do see. So one of these days, I'm going to do more videos on how the importance of digital art to create uh, to do your creative stuff before you actually ever, ever paint. So that's one of the things that I've been concentrating on lately. And so I'm liking the way that she's starting to come together, right? She's starting to feel, uh, I like the way she's feeling right now. She has a real feeling of depth. And I'm going to use my freehand shield. And we're going to crawl along the surface, right? We're not going to get that shape. So we're just going to crawl along the surface here. Wiping off after every application. So as we crawl along the surface, you want to make sure that you're just painting on parallel from where you're covering. You see that? That's very important. Now also, I talk about that not too often, but that's something that I'm actually touching on, is that there is a grain in wood and there's also a grain in skin, and I have been finding that out. Now badgers are 1.6, they're really small, uh, but we want to use the 1.8 because that's the size that you have uh, on yours, Wendy, you have the 1.8 inch because you initially purchased the Iwatas. You have the extreme, you have the HPSPS, you have the uh, HPSPS Eclipse, and you have the Custom Micron CMSB, correct? And that's why you use those others. And perpendicular and not parallel. There we go. So. As you see, we want that hair to come forward. Very important above the face. So we're not only painting, uh, you know, we're not only painting things to look like the right value, but we really want them to have depth. And that has a lot to do with edges. No, uh, the, the Mac valve you want, you want to have a Mac valve with the 1 8. So I know I, I'm definitely going to help you with that. So I want you to instant message me before you order uh, Wendy, and we'll make sure we get you the new one. I don't want you to randomly get it. But yeah, most of them are going to be that are not... I think Badger only makes the ones for their small, uh, their small size. But that's the thing, you know, 
now Badger comes with the 1.8 adapter. You see that? So there's a 1.8 adapter. Now it fits the Quick Connect for the Iwata and stuff like that. So a lot of people come from the Iwata universe and that's why they already have the compressor and the connections, you know? Oh no, that's great. That's uh, uh, I really appreciate all your insight, Mike. That's for sure. No, anyone has insight, always feel free to give it. A lot of times you guys know a lot more than I do. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it definitely is that one eighth that I was confused at first. Believe me, Mike, right? I definitely was. Okay, so we're going to continue moving around here with the light mixture and we're going to let's go ahead and see if we could start putting some life into her hair. So I'm going to now a lot of people look at me and say, Tim, you're working, you're painting with one hand. Well, guys, always and guys, and girls, always remember I'm doing this eight hours a day six hours some days, some days even more than eight hours. So if I work with, you know, if I'm doing this with one hand, it's just because I'm doing it so much and I'm a horizontal painter. So I paint on a horizontal surface, but definitely two hands until you feel comfortable. Hey, what's going up Air Todd? Good to see you. How's everything going? So that's cool. And so right now, as you see, we're working on the dark, the larger shapes, and we're just going to get them established. And that's how we, we work on the smaller shapes. Those who take my classes know that we have to be tenacious with hair. That means we have to keep going. We have to work, go back in, make areas lighter, make areas darker, go from the, the, uh, the more... With hair, you want to make sure you go from the large to small. And, of course, I mean, I remember Drew said that hair travels in, in, in large groups, not just individual hairs. And so you want to keep that in mind. I'm going to switch to my medium mixture now. And uh, let's see. So good to see you there, Todd. So cool you can make it. How's life over there in San Diego? So is Ron Burgundy really big in San Diego? <laughs> I do think uh, those movies are hilarious. Uh, the movies, uh, what was that, Ron Burgundy? Uh, definitely have to leave your brain at the door, right? But they're a lot of fun. Will Ferrell is just the most hilarious guy, I'm telling you. He's really funny, as you guys know. And let's see... So working on the larger areas. So when I start working on the hair, a lot of the face is going to make more sense. Now you see there's some lighter hair shapes right here. I just increase my distance, right? I don't always have to go ahead and, and change to the light mixture. Sometimes I could actually just uh, go ahead and change the distance to get a very light, more transparent value even though I'm with the medium mixture. I don't recommend it. I think it's important to use the right mixture for the job. Uh, that's why I have the two airbrush system. So take advantage of that. If you have a nice subtle light, a nice subtle dark, then I say switch over to your medium mixture. Oh, okay. Good to see you, Todd. Always a pleasure. Hope to talk to you soon again. And take care of yourself. 
Thank you so much. And we only got like 10 minutes left, but uh, what a great live stream, guys. Thank you so much for hanging with me. And after this, I'm going to go ahead and, and edit tomorrow's uh, Airbrush Diary. And definitely let me know what you think of it and any ideas you might have for uh, future episodes or something like that you'd like to see. I'd love that, you know. Oh, really? You got, oh, wow, that's amazing. So you got to see Ron Burgundy when I, that Sea World. Yes, I think there was a gorilla or something that was attacking a baby. That was the scene that was at the zoo. Am I right? That's pretty cool. No, SeaWorld is different. So that might have been the second one. Okay. So, like I said, um, you know, with those uh, Ron Burgundy movies, I mean, they really leave your brain at the door kind of stuff. <laughs> right? That's true. Uh, and... I know it's boring to see me work on hair, but I just want you to see how you have to be tenacious and stick with it, right? Mm -hmm. Stick with the large shapes and the small shapes. So you see I'm um, with the uh, light mixture again. And I'm just concentrating to make sure my head's in the game and I got this correctly. I have this correctly, right? I have to get these shapes correctly. If I don't, then it's going to come back to haunt me. So now I can move over to my medium mixture because it's just a little bit dark. Oh, John says hair isn't boring. That's what keeps I uh, keep trying to get figuring out. Okay, great. All right, fantastic. Oh, diet stands for did I eat that? That's pretty funny. That's cool. And uh, hair is hard, right, Gary? It is. And But that's why we have to stick with it, guys, you know? We just have to make sure. So here I am with the medium mixture, and I'm just going to reiterate this shape here. And then we have this shape. And we're just going to make sure we get these shapes down. They're really soft edge, super soft edge. So we don't need freehand shield just yet. We may down the line. There we go. And then we have this shape going down here like this. It's much darker than it lightens up. And then here we have a couple of very light lines. Remember, you always want to use the right airbrush for the job, the right tool for the job. There's some very light. Now, this is the instance where parallel is okay. If you're doing, let's say, a, a light hair over here, you want to be about two and a half inches and you see, you can just do a light hair over there like that. So here is where perpendicular is will work. But the, I mean, parallel will work because you're doing an edge, you know, a nice line with hair. So that would be one of the specific cases that it does work. And then we can sculpt a little bit with here. And bring this down so so like I said you know we have to stick with the hair because it will you can get sidetracked and the hair could just eat you up alive and we don't want that and so we have this little light area that comes down here right we have this square and we're just going to sort of calm that down get that square and then you have this large group of hair that comes all the way down. And we just want to make sure that we're on the right page, right? So this comes down and this here comes out and we have this shape. 
and then we want to see what's going on with the other shape and don't be afraid to use your pencil hey brad have a great night my friend thank you so much i appreciate that always good to see my friend brad from canada so um let's see um so brad always tells me whenever i say we had a cold day he's like you guys don't know about cold and he's a, he's very true we don't and uh, Heath is actually from Canada as well and he can concur that's for sure so you see how we are we're definitely working on uh, these large shapes here see how this is coming out here and then this comes in here so we can use our pencil we can always erase later and then we have this large group of hair or this now it's not a large hair it's a group of hair and it comes down just like that and then over here we have this last group of hair here that's kind of dark so that's how we're going to stick with this you know and so doing good we're actually at the 1125 mark here and we just want to stick with this hair but you want to paint the hair, and this is going to make uh, uh, Mr. Leahy happy. You want to paint like Vermeer. Uh, and you want to go from the, from the broad to the specific. By doing that, you'll, you won't put in too much hair, just enough. Because someone asked me, Tim, why do you not want to go crazy with the hair and do every hair? Because our attention is right here. This is where our attention lies. Maybe a little bit in her cute little mouth here. So if I go ahead and go crazy with the hair, I'm going to be taken away from where I, the artist, where you, the artist, wants to direct the viewer's eyes, right? So we want to make sure that we're the director. We are the ones who, who decide or want to uh, where you want the viewer's eyes to go. And that's important. That's what the old masters did, you know, with Vermeer. Yes, Steve. So Steve, Steve agrees, right? And uh, so you look at the Boston painters. That's from around where Steve is. I think they were in the early 1900s, late 1800s. The Boston School. Uh, what was it? Uh, William Paxton. Uh, a couple of others. Just amazing painters. And they would go from the from the very broad to the specific, and that was always good to see. And that, that affected me a lot, you know, to see that. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit here. Okay, so still being tenacious with the hair, not giving up. Because if I give up, and I could lose it, and then it could be like, ugh, you know. Oh. I can't wait. No, you're going to you do some good work there, Todd. I love your work, my friend. And keep going, you know. I think you're doing great, sir. Now, since we did the pencil, right, we're going to wait till that dries because that, those pencil lines really did help me out. And right here we have this. And this, this is just sticking with it, you know. There we go. Now we're going to let that dry for a second. You can just blow some air on here, you know, without pulling back. And then take an easy eraser and pull up some of those pencils. One of the great things about working with the India ink, if you put India ink over pencil, it really uh, doesn't trap the, the ink underneath. which doesn't trap the lead underneath, so the pencil, so you can erase that. So you see how I'm getting rid of that shininess that's over here. There we go. And little by little, we just stick with it. We don't give up, and that's important. Mike S. says, hair only needs light detailing. The viewer's mind will fill in what is missing. Very true, and you'll see that in a lot of Rembrandt paintings where it's just, uh, just, a cup, just one value and then, you know, some, some lighter values for just some of the light, some of the hair is picking up the light. 
Oh, Brad says the great part about working with India Inc. is that if you prick yourself, you have a tattoo. <laughs> That's very true. Gary says uh, he gets blue shift with the pencil lines sometimes. Interesting. And what happens is that you have too much graphite. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you uh, definitely don't. How do I say? You want to make sure that you you kind of erase before you put in the India ink. And especially if you put in white, you don't want too much. Because uh, graphite does, when it gets wet, does some weird things, right guys? It really does. Definitely does some strange stuff. Lockjaw from a dirty needle, oh my goodness. So yes, um, I find, like when I first picked up the airbrush, how blue shift would ruin my day. And now I devise so many different things to avoid the blue shift. And you really have to, right? You have to divide, devise ways to preemptive, uh, you know, work so it doesn't happen. That's why I always say to my students, learn chess because chess is so important. In chess, you are three, four, five moves ahead, so you know exactly what you're going to do before, so you're setting up. And that's it. Hey, guys, it is, believe it or not, 1130. Thank you so much for an amazing live stream. Everyone, you guys were great. This has been one of my favorite live streams uh, in recent memory, so I really appreciate it. Yes, see everybody next week, Willie, and thank you guys for everything, Steve and Willie and Gary and Mike and Jerry and the, the new Mike and John and, you know, everyone out there, Tone, Wendy, you guys are all fantastic, uh, Raul, just thank you guys, really, really amazing, Gary Gold and Bill and Chris, and I'm going to leave somebody out, Patty. Um, let's see who else, uh, you know, but if I missed you, don't, don't think that you weren't important. It's just my brain is fried right now. <laughs> I hope you have a great night guys. Take care tomorrow on YouTube. You will find, uh, day four of the airbrush of the airbrush diary. So look out for that. Take care everybody.